Orange County Audio Society, and uh, our panelists. First, well, actually, yeah, first, George Curtis. Woo. He's a surprise panelist. I have nothing written for him. So you're going to have to look him up. <laughs> Next, we have Alex Rossum. He's been in the post-production recording industry for 15 years, co-owner of Play Me Records, 100 releases, 150 artists on that label. He's also the co-founder and CEO of Odyssey, and that's really the reason why he's on the panel, Odyssey Headphones. They are in the marketplace number two, which is a little bit difficult to find, and once you're in marketplace number two, you have to go on to the patio. Which is kind of hidden in the back. So By the pool, though, it's a really cool spot. Yeah. It's a really cool spot. Great breeze. Great breeze. <laughs> yeah. And also, uh, in the audio salon room, the 203. The yeah, that's right. Yeah, All and right. they've got a really comfy chair up there. That's a nice one. Okay, and then Michael Mercer, Hi Fi Missionary. He's <laughs> worked in the recording industry as well. He's been a task setup man, he's a writer, reviewer. He works for Centrance, but he's got his press badge on right now. Because <laughs> today, I'm um, today. I'm yeah. Right. So Centrance doesn't have a room right now, but they're around. Uh, they were in the we, 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 yeah, we were in the Crystal Foyer, and we met our goal, and just uh, you know, the boss had to fly home, and uh, we all had a lot of stuff to do. Yeah, I got my press badge. Okay. And then uh, I should mention too, Centrance does pro audio as well as home. We, we do indeed. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, George Severa here. And I got the city wrong yesterday. He said Boise instead of Bozeman. He's from Bozeman. He's, he's come a long way to visit us. He's vice president of Headroom. And you guys should all get on headphone.com and check that out. News, reviews, blogs, charts, graphs, information. They sell their own product. They also sell other people's products. And they have a great set of like four or five tables out here of everything you can imagine. If you're a headphone guy, get on over there. Listen. Yeah, a lot of the headphones will talk about comments and stuff as well as people for listening to the table too. And a suitcase also with other headphones that aren't out on the table. Yeah. So if you're interested in something else and you don't see something there, please ask because they have a whole bunch of other things. And then, yes, in fact, they Yeah. And then uh, Mark Chen on the end. Mark Chen, DIY enthusiast, speaker, builder, headphone builder. And he's here because he does these, what are they called again? Waterfall cascade. Waterfall blocks of CSD. Yeah. Cumulative spectral decay. Yeah. Say that one more time. The cumulative spectral decay. You'd have to uh, talk to John Atkinson more about what those mean or be stereophile. Yeah. Okay. It basically just lets uh, the lay person, like me, look at something and say, oh, that's good or bad. I don't know the numbers. I can't figure those out, but I can see the picture. So he makes stuff into something that's, I think, a little more comprehensible for people that aren't too technically inclined, like myself. Okay, and uh, yeah, I think that's it. You don't have, you're not a vendor, but you're all, all you do, you've had like 2,000 posts on it. <laughs> well, I don't think it's no one posts. He, he posts now and then. Now and then, once in a while. So check, check him out on, do a little. I'll head fine. If I'm He's a, a fine. pure in I, I will, yeah, pure in, P-U-R-R-I-N. Uh, every now and then, uh, when a new headphone comes out, I'll, I'll do some analysis on it, uh, take measurements, different types of measurements, and throw them out. Yeah. Just a way of trying to communicate uh, in other ways rather than more objective ways. Yeah. And, uh, I think Mark's graphs kind of show that not all measurements are equal. It's how you do it as well as what you do. And the best way to look at it is in a comparative way. Let's take a look at some headphones that uh, I like that I think are very good, and uh, we'll compare them to headphones that are less than perfect. Okay. And now I'll turn this over to George. I think he's going to turn over to Absolutely. George. Thank you, Tim. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks everybody, for coming out. Um, and, and I know Pierre will have some uh, of those spectral graph displays available for us to look at here shortly with some of our uh, favorite headphones. Uh, I want to turn it over to George first. As you guys may know, George has been uh, one of the cable industry gurus for, um, I don't know, since the dawn of time. And he's actually getting into the headphone game for the first time with some of the cars and uh, in ears that he's been working on. And they're still kind of an R&D. Uh, but George, I kind of want to have, kind of, why don't you start off and just ask you what drove you to design your first set of headphones? Well, I've been in this industry for a little while. I'm kind of new to this. And uh, some of you probably know I've been around for a while. Um, I'm a music junkie. I mean, that's where I started out for. I love the stuff. Uh, 
And something happened in the mid 80s which pretty seriously disturbed me and a lot of other people. And some people didn't know it. But uh, music's like love. Uh, you can feel it when it's in the room. You can feel it when it's not. And the feeling went away. Suddenly we had a beautiful woman with no heart. The CD sucked. Um, and it was a time thing. And we were told, well, you know, it makes perfect sine waves from 20 to 20 and all that kind of stuff. Well, sine waves don't move me. Um, the field does. You know, and the field comes up out of the earth. Um, so one of the biggest problems we had, or at the time, one of the obvious problems was that the, the wire in the industry wasn't working at all, accentuated the leaning edge, which combined with the CD, which essentially did the same thing. Shit was irritating, man, it was bad. I mean, it was ugly. Uh, and in a sense, it was good for business, because a lot of people who had bought the shtick went out and got CD players and forgot about their records, and all of a sudden they're going, whoa, whoa, whoa God, it's in the field, right? What am I going to do? I'm going to buy some equipment or something, you know? Or here's some cables, man, you know? Uh, so, at first, it was, and always will be, there was a dance. I was dancing with what was available and what was at the time. So I, I couldn't at that time go straight forward and try to make something that was perfect. What I wanted to do is I made it, make something that mixed with the environment and allowed that feeling to come through. So it didn't happen overnight, all right? It was a, a like, kind of like playing golf or something. It was insightful, it came over years and a, a big span of time. Uh, it, it was very, very difficult. And you never, you never really could measure anything until you really understood what you were measuring for, at which point you'd already sort of figured it out, okay? Uh, I came from the phone company, so I know more about measuring cable than anybody, seriously. And I have all the cool gear, but you had to forget everything you knew and start over again. Now eventually you ended up almost back where you started, but things were adjusted, they were different. Well, I kind of got to the point of diminishing return in that thing, and I'm an obsessive. I need to have something to figure out, or uh, I'm unstable, okay? So it, it, that's where I'm at. So I needed something to figure out, so I go to the area of most need. No longer cables, all right? So uh, that's stable. I, I've got someone to turn that business over to and go run it, one thing or another. Uh, I'm still there every day. but. Uh, I need a new puzzle to figure out. So I went, Logitech came to me, and Logitech said, hey man, you make cables for headphones, and so on, and, and a lot of people are saying they work really good, and so on, what, what can you do? So I started working with Logitech, because they were having problems with fatigue factors and their inner monitors and that sort of stuff, you know? And I said, well fine, I'll make cables for you, you know? And they contracted me to do that, and so, I said, give me a bunch of these things to try. Lord, you know, I mean, they offended my ears. And it wasn't because they didn't measure flat, they do. I mean, very respectfully. It was because they hurt my ears. <laughs> Pretty straightforward, you know. There was, there, there's nothing soothing about the product, you know. And uh, so, but whatever, so I went out and I bought a whole bunch more. I, I bought literally a Tupperware thing full of in-ear monitors and stuff, you know, and it was tragic. You know, it's like, what the hell is going on here? You know, I don't know. I don't know. Like, so, oh, let's figure this out. Well, I actually did. Uh, it didn't happen overnight, and I'm not going to go into all the gory details of, of every little thing, but each little simple part made a difference. These things are so sensitive. Uh, in theory, you would think that they would be the best transducer because they have the least amount of mass to move in order to communicate what needs to come through. But the degree of understanding on them was ridiculously low. I mean, it was like, what the hell's going on here? Why are these people doing this? Well, what happened was, with most new things, and these are new things, don't get me wrong, they may be around for a long time, but they're relatively new. There's, there's changes that have taken place here, all right? Uh, Neodymium, okay, uh, made a lot of things possible. There were, uh, there's a lot of things, there's a window opening up there's allowing what we lost back in the 80s to come through, all right? And, and you guys are as close as, to it as anybody because the big systems have become so complex that, oh my God, you go around every room, it sounds completely different, okay? That's not a good sign, okay? 
with the set with the music wise, the headphones are good. You know, I mean, they're kind of like, wow. Well, if whatever they do or don't do, it's relatively obvious, and they all seem somewhat musical. Now they don't have some perspective or this or that or the other thing, but there's a lot going on that's good. Where they lack is in the bottom. And generally, the feeling I got was, well, if you put any bottom in, they get muddy and they don't articulate. So let's we'll just roll them off. You know. No, what, are you, what are you doing? It shouldn't be that way. So I kind of, let's, let's first let's start from zero and try and work this out. So I did. And what I determined was that the eardrum is a certain size or a certain dimension. And in order to have these things be linear over a range, the in-ears, you had to match the area of the driver to the eardrum, or at least the displacement per stroke. All right, or else what happens is this is twice as big, and then at a certain volume level, it's, it's doubling the pressure with relationship to what's going on at higher frequencies. So you'd be in basically the impedance coupling between the ear and the, the diaphragm is like crazy, all right? And they either hurt or did this or that or the other thing. So in a sealed system, and then they measure them the same way. And it was like, oh my God, you know, because you would look at these measurements and you would go, well, this doesn't correlate at all to what I'm perceiving, okay? And what I'm looking for is, again, this field, all right, and the whole thing. So I started off down a path. Well, we cracked it. And we got it done. I mean, I, I sized all these little, everything together, and I made little logarithmic curves pointing into the ear. The connectors were a really big deal. I mean, all these cables we sell, the connectors, see, because there's a basic flaw in the connector. 99.9% .9 of the connectors in the field have a nickel common pole. So now you've got both channels common through a little nickel tube, essentially. All right? It don't work. It's bad. Okay? So, but we discovered that earlier when we made big headphone cables and so on. But to make a little one like that was a whole different trick. So, but anyway, that wasn't the, let me cut straight to the, one of the more unique situations here. All the designs that were out there, were basically loudspeaker designs that were scaled down. Hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's like taking a ship and scaling it down and trying to make a canoe. And you can do it, but it's going to be a damn funny looking canoe and it ain't going to work that well. And a great big canoe the size of a ship isn't going to be that cool either. But So the, the scaling brings about different things. In a larger driver, the pistonic quality, whether it moves straight back and forth, is a big deal. Because if it does a little bit like this or one thing or another, it generates harmonics. All right, that are in the hearing range, and so on. Now, not that these don't do that, but they're so tiny that the the weight, the percentage of wavelength that is involved is very tiny. So it's still a factor, but not to the degree that it is in bigger speakers. All right. The other thing that came up is all speakers run on magnets. So the big change that took here recently is neodymium. Now, what happens is the magnetic field in a magnet comes out both ends. Let's just do any good. It needs to be over here. So there's a yoke, a thing that goes around in a loudspeaker. In the, in the case of these things, the yoke is the frame. All right? And then on the end of it, they put a little washer. Now, these washers are basically made out of iron. They're permeable material so that the magnetic lines of force can take a band and then go through a narrow gap. Okay? And that's the way loudspeakers work. And then, okay, well, we'll just make them that way, and everything will be fine. Uh, no. Uh, the, the problem comes here. In a regular driver, you've got a pole piece that comes up in the center, and it muddies things up a little. Well, and the reason it does is because there's eddy currents that flow in it. And eddy currents are because the iron's conductive and it's permeable, okay? Uh, so it, it generates a little bit of current, which generates a field, which generates a current, which generates a field, and so on. So you get these eddies running, okay? It's a, not a good thing. And the better drivers, they'll put a little copper slug in there or try and coat it or something. And at high frequencies, it, yeah, it kind of cleans things up. It's kind of nice, one thing or another. Dude, these things is a whole different story. In the regular size driver, it's all about, well, we clean the highs up if we do this a little bit. Well, the reason that they don't worry about the lows, or it's a smaller concern with them, is because of skin effect. Now, the skin effect is something that not very many people really understand. But I can explain it to you a little bit. It's like, it's caused by eddy currents. Well, on copper wire, it's at real high frequencies. So these eddy currents don't happen, you know, they're way up here someplace. But iron, iron's permeable. 
It's, it's got, so it can hold a lot of lines of fucks and stuff. So it's got like a thousand times more skin effect than cotton does. So what happens in these pole pieces is that the feel from the coil doesn't really get to the inside of the coil, the pole, because of skin effect. And the skin effect depth at 60 cycles with iron is 20 thousandths ish, give or take, depending upon the type of iron, so on and so forth. All right, which is like, okay, so it does something, but not a lot, and mostly at high frequencies. But 20 thousandths at 60 cycle or 100 cycle or whatever, depending on, that's how thick that washer is. That little washer on the edge is 20 or 30 thousandths thick. So the involvement of that washer changes dramatically as you go down towards the bottom of the frequencies. All, and all of a sudden, it's like, whoa, this ain't right. Well, you can compensate because what the field does is it damps the drivers. Now, a driver with no damping is a drum head and just sits there and oscillates at several different frequencies. So in a loudspeaker, you, you need to damp it somehow to keep it, throw a little molasses in the works. So you can do it by putting a, sealing it and then putting in little holes or, uh, you know, for a periodic type damping, which works in something small like this. Or you can damp it with electrically with what's going on at the amplifier side, which is quite common. In other words, you can take a driver and go like this and it feels real loose and juicy, and you put a short across it and it's not anymore. Okay, well, that does two things. It damps the driver, it also squeegees out the, the harmonic structure. So you can have too much of it. It's really important that the damping be in the right zone, and it's kind of a narrow little slot. Well, we figured it out, we did it. You know, and we nailed it. God, we had so much fun. I mean, we had these things, we had a bunch of them in CES or passing around, everybody's freaking out and doing high fives and running up and down the aisles going, oh my God, these things are completely awesome. We've never seen anything like it. And a week later, they all quit. <laughs> they all quit working? They all quit, well, the base went, the, the base went, again, yeah, the critical damping, the base which was so damn important, we lost it. Now, you could do a couple of things. You could degauss it, which was, I don't know if you've ever seen our freak sweep records and that kind of stuff. Well, that dig basically de degausses the structure to some degree. But the problem is that it's temporary in the case of these things because of the neodymium. And the stuff is so damn powerful that it actually forms the iron. You know, it, it, over a period of time, the iron changes path. Well, it's not a big change, but it changes the damping factor. So now you've got to go back in and you can change the size of your hole or you can do this or that or the other thing, and then they work again. Everything's fine. And then two or three weeks later.